The first thing you need to do when you're making your movie is decide what is your animation going to be about. Um, it could be some kind of statement that you want to make about what's going on in the world today. It could be um, maybe how your grandparents met or a funny story about something you did when you were a kid. It could be um, a story that you've read sometime. Maybe there's a, a kid's book that you would like to animate, or maybe there's part of a book that you've read in English that um, would be fun to animate. Um, or just something that you make up. What I've chosen here as an example is Hansel and Gretel. So something to think about is what are your characters and what are your what is your setting going to be? So in Hansel and Gretel you have the brother and sister Hansel and Gretel. Um, and also the Wicked Witch. You have the uh, gingerbread house where the Wicked Witch lives. If you want to tell the whole story, you'd show Hansel and Gretel walking through the woods, dropping breadcrumbs. And then that's basically it. So that would be what you would need to model. When you model your characters, remember that we cannot, like for example, if we were to model this girl, we cannot like bend her arm or wiggle her fingers if she's made out of one whole object, like what we did with the body that we made on the head. So if you make something in edit mode, that's fine, but just understand that that's going to be one solid object and you're not going to be able to show movement in parts of that object. Um, also, when you're um, thinking about your model, I want you to think about low poly instead of high poly. So low poly just means um, the number of faces that you have is pretty low, and that's going to make your life easier as you add more and more things to your little setting, your world that you're making. Um, even though our computers are, are pretty nice, really, they can get bogged down the more faces that you have. So keeping it low poly does two things. It helps the computer not get bogged down in either the modeling process or the animating process or the rendering process, all of which we'll talk about at some point during this, this project. Um, it also um, it lets you convey an idea without having to be super detailed about it. And really the more detailed you are about something, the better a modeler you have to be in order for it to look right. So I don't know if you've noticed, but when we did those bodies, um, like mine did not look right, I don't know, maybe some of yours looked a lot better than mine, but a lot of us are struggling, we're struggling with um, making things look realistic. And if you do low poly, it's a lot easier to be like, well, it's not realistic and it's fine for this low poly. So, like these little trees, they're just little blobs, and they look great. If you tried to make a realistic tree, you could literally spend, you know, a week or more just modeling one tree. And then that tree would be so resource-heavy, it would have so many faces or things going on with it, that it would um, crash our computers. So, something to keep in mind. Um, as far as characters go, you want to design your characters to have... Um, if you want them to be able to move things, they need to be separate parts. And I'm going to show you that in an example in Blender here in a minute. But for example here, like this arm could be a separate part, and the eyes could be a separate part, and the eyebrows could be a separate part, the mouth could be a separate part, etc., etc. And notice that these look, like you can tell these are people, even though they're clearly blocks and, you know, they're not realistic people, um, but they're just cute. So that's something to keep in mind. You can do some things that are pretty simple, that look nice, and you don't have to be realistic. You can think about kind of Lego type movement. If you've played with Legos before, they have stiff arms, but you can have the arms swing kind of thing. Um, or Fisher Price people, this is what I grew up with. They don't have any arms or legs, but you can tell they're people, and they're just very simple. Um, Veggie Tales is another example um, where the show has basically vegetables that go on adventures and somehow they are able to do things with no arms or legs. So like this guy's drumming and he is able to do that with no arms and it looks fine. It looks, I mean, 
when you're watching the show, you don't really notice that they don't have arms. So since we are able to create our own uh, world here, you do not have to keep it based in reality. Like you don't have to give people arms and legs. They can just, you know, have things floating near them and things happening and it's fine. So I actually made um, a robot kind of based on this, not exactly, but sort of a little loosely based on this. And I'm going to show you how um, kind of what I would join together in a solid object and what I would leave separate. So here's my little robot. If I render it, um, he has a glowing kind of hover part down here. And then his arms are, oops, there we go. Um, his arms are not connected. And that's fine because this is my reality that I'm creating. It's going to work. Um, and I've given him some expression and whatever. So my brows. So there are two ways that we're going to join things together. One way is if you want the object to be completely solid from then on. And you're going to keep it as just one object the entire animation. So I'm going to go ahead and make this whole block here with the buttons and the name. Um, I'm going to select all of that stuff and join it together into one object. So I'm going to do a control J for that. And now if I wanted to move that, it's all one object. For the face, right now if I try to move the head, it's moving without any of the eyeballs or whatever. So I actually want to do something called parenting for this. Um, so I have all these separate objects. If I go into edit mode for any of these, I can only edit one object at a time with the exception of this that I've now joined together, this whole block here. So these are all separate objects. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, it's called parenting the eyebrows and the eyeballs to the head. So I'm going to select the whites of the eyes and the eyebrows, and then I'm going to select the head, the parent, last, and I'm going to do control P instead of control J, and I'm going to set parent to object, and that, that makes the parent whatever it is that you selected last. And now if I only select the head, I can move those parts that I parented. Clearly, I still need to do those eyeballs. Um, and if I select an eyebrow, for example, I can still move it independently. But then if I select the head, that still moves with the head. So that's what parenting is. Um, the reason I did not parent these pupils yet is because I want to parent those to the eyes. So I'm going to select the pupil, select the eyeball, do control P and say object. And that selects the last thing that makes the last thing I selected the parent. Pupil, eyeball, control P, set it to object. And now what I can do is kind of give him some more expression here. So if I select both of these, I can now, oopsie, still have that eye selected. So I can move these eyeballs independently and have him look around. And if I wanted to, for whatever reason, let me select these whites of the eyes, I can move the whole eye together and the pupils will stay with the eye, which is what I want. I don't want my pupils to be, you know, bopping around on their own. So it's pretty easy to get expressions with eyebrows, by the way. If I rotate this, I can make him look mad. Oops. Oh dear. Okay, lesson one, rotate in front mode. Okay, rotate, give him an angry look. Rotate. So these kinds of movements are what you're going to be able to animate when you go to um, do your animation. 
or that's called keyframing. You'll be able to keyframe these kinds of movements if you have separate, separate objects. So this parenting allows you to have still separate objects, but let those objects follow, um, follow each other around. So I would do something similar. I would probably make the body the main parent so that if I move this body, every part would follow it around and you would just decide what you want your main parent to be. It could be the head, it could be the foot, it could be anything. But to me, for this robot, it would make the most sense for me to do that here. I would probably do something with this arm, like um, parent the fingers to the hand, and the hand to this, and this, you know, parent all the way up, so that if I move this, or rotate this, it would make this entire thing rotate as well. And that just makes the animation a little bit easier if you're trying to do something fancy with something like this. And then I would probably parent this to the body. And then I would be able to move everything together. But then if I wanted this, you know, um, I'm trying to show that he's moving or whatever, then I could, um, whoops, I could, come on now, what the, what the, Okay, I don't know what just happened with my thing here. It's not letting me grab. Oh, there, I can grab that. It won't let me grab this red thing, which is what I want. Huh. All right, well, whatever. I guess I could make him well now. Okay, well, my computer's glitching out here. So if I wanted to, I could make this rotate eventually somehow, I guess. Um, and I'd probably duplicate this arm over on the other side, all that maybe give them a little antenna or something. So anyway, so also I have, you can't really see it. Oh no, it's gone. You can't see it because it's gone. So I had a plane in here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a plane and scale it up really big. Oh, or not. Oh, I turned this thing off. Okay, scale it up really big. Here we go. I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to subdivide it a bunch of times. So this is just an, oops, too many times. Um, this is just an easy way to get kind of a low poly background. I might even scale it up even, oops, scale it up even more. Okay, so maybe I'll subdivide one more time. So what you can do in edit mode, some of you have actually found this on accident is turn this thing on. And you'll want to turn it off when you're done, by the way. You can turn this on to probably connected would be the best option here. Um, select a face and do something like pull it up. And the, I can scroll my, see that circle? I can scroll my middle mouse button. The bigger that is, the more area around it it affects. So it's kind of cool. You can make some like mountainy kind of things. Maybe I'd want to rotate, and I bet this is going to look weird because I have the proportional editing on. Oh, kind of cool. So I can do something like that. You can rotate more than just that one face this way. And anyway, so maybe I'll make some uh, mountains or whatever in the background. Um, yeah, so. And then I'm going to turn this off because once if you don't want this on, it can be very confusing as to what's happening. So I'm going to disable that now. OK, so that's just a quick and dirty um, kind of idea of how you could get some different things other than what we've done before. So the parenting with control P, make sure you select the um, the parent or the, the thing that you want to be in control of other things. Select that last. And then you can subdivide a plane to just make a simple kind of setting. In the future, I will show you how to actually animate and make your characters do things, move around, have the camera follow your character or look different places, um, and set keyframes. Um, and then after that, once you have all that set up and everything's kind of playing correctly, then I'll show you how to um, render and add render your frames and add sound and all that.